We talked uh, in an earlier video about the Coleman pocket stove that was used early on in some version, probably not the exact version that I showed in that video, which was fully chromed out, the, which was a 530, I believe it is, the nomenclature. The 520 was probably a stove that was more commonly used in the military, although Coleman advertised the 530 as a military stove. It was modeled after the military stove, but it was really never used in service that I can find in the research. The 520, however, was. So this container was made to fit the 520 stove as well, and it has a, what they call, this is called the F container, because it had this F shape on it that would allow it to fit a larger stove and lock into place, or a shorter stove and lock into place. And this one, is dated 1945, and so is the stove. And I have a Robert stove from 1966 from the Vietnam era that's in the exact same container, the same F stop on it, the same F configuration here, but it's dated 1966. So this container was used universally for a long time between at least two or three different stoves, maybe more than that. This stove, is not a Coleman stove. This stove was made by the Aladdin Company, which is the same company that makes Aladdin oil lamps. And this stove was manufactured, this one is a 1942 mod. They had one called the 1942, and the difference was there was a large wheel on here that controlled your fuel flow, whereas this one has a, a knob that controls fuel flow like a normal single burner stove. The 1940 had a wheel, a big gear wheel down here at the bottom. And <clears throat> from the research I've seen, it was made that way because it was supposed to be a winter use, deep snow, cold weather type stove. So you could turn that fuel adjustment with mittens on and not have to take those off to adjust a small knob like this. But that stove was only made for one year and then it was converted over to this style stove, the 1942 Mod which was only made for five years. One of the things I don't understand is why it was only made for five years and I can't really find out why that is. Because to me, this stove, if I had to choose one single burner stove manufactured before probably 1980, this would be the one I would choose. And we're gonna talk about the reasons for that in a few minutes. So the way this stove stores is you would pick this up and lift the ring up on the outside and all of your pot supports would fold in. It had tripod style legs that folded underneath and it was stored inside of this container. It was also made to store directly inside of the mountain cook set, which went with this stove as an issue item by the quartermaster. And this is an incomplete set. I have a complete set up the top. I just happened to grab the wrong one when I came down here. But the way this set was made is it had two aluminum pots with a small bale. I think that bale would come up. One that nested inside the other. And then the entire stove would nest inside the pots so you could carry that as one cook set and not necessarily have to have this container here. And then the top of this thing was made out of steel so that it could be used as a skillet for cooking off of. So you had a steel lid and you had an aluminum pot or two pots, one that nested inside the other. And that was considered the mountain cook set, okay? So let's go back to the stove for a minute because the stove is the very, very impressive part of this whole deal. So what you would do is you would lift these up and you would let the ring drop down below and that would hold these pot supports in place. And you had these larger winged type pot supports on both the 42 and the 42 mod so that it could support this large cook set. And you can see that that large cook set fits right in there the way it's supposed to and it supports it really, really well. So it's not flippy and floppy at all. Without those big long support feet on there, you wouldn't be able to fit this large cook set on top of it. I'm sure that was used for melting snow among other things is part of the reason it was so large. But the reason this set was created was for two soldiers to be away from resupply for a certain amount of time, and this would be good for both of them. Okay, so let's talk about the features real quick of this M42 mod. We talked about the swinging arms here to hold the pot for pot supports. 
you have a fuel cap here that has a pump built into it so that you can pump air into the tank to pressurize the tank. If you pull this completely out and you expose the pump, you can also take the bottom off the pump and there are spare parts inside the pump housing for the stove itself. It had a lever here which controlled a cleaning needle for the fuel jet. So you would lift that up and down to clean the fuel needle. The down position pushes the needle up. The up position brings the needle back down. So the up position is the light position. I'm going to have to get a little bit closer to this thing for you because I want you to see down inside how this works. Now that we've got it pumped up before we light it, I want you to see how this operates because the operation of the stove is very, very good. All right, so I've zoomed in on this the best I can without burning my camera up. But what happens is we're going to open this fuel valve and you can see that there is a small bowl here. And your jet is up underneath here. And what happens is when you turn the fuel on, the pressure pushes fuel up through the jet and it leaks down into this bowl. And that's a preheating bowl to make it draw. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn that, we're gonna crack this. And you can see it automatically got wet and we're gonna shut it right off and turn it on. And that's going to preheat that bowl to get that stove going. Back this camera up just a little bit here. I'm not so close to burning the fur off my microphone here. As it starts to kick in like this, we'll open the fuel valve slowly here. Got a little wind affecting it right now, and I don't have a windscreen. Now we'll just open the fuel valve all the way. And that thing's rocking and rolling. It's really a no muss, no fuss deal. You start it up from dead cold like I just did. You know, 30, 40 seconds, this thing's rocking and rolling. It's not like a modern gas stove. You just turn the thing on, flip the lighter, and it's ready to rock and roll. But for an old pressure gas type stove like this, it is nothing to get this thing lit. We're going to talk about some of the other reasons I like this stove so well. It's not just because it's easy to light. It's not just because it has the large pot supports on it. There's a couple other really critical things that I like about the stove that makes it far superior to many of the other stoves, even up through the 60s and 70s from companies like Coleman. It won't be long now and that whole thing is going to be solid red. I don't really want to let it get to that point because I want to be able to handle the stove, so I'm going to turn it off. We just turn the fuel off and that will let it kind of ease down and go out by itself. Once all the fuel is burned off, it will go out. Okay, there she goes. All right, so back to the features of this stove and why I like it so much. The main reason that this stove is so good is because almost all of the parts, other than a few pieces of brass, are stainless steel, including this font. You'll never see one of these that's rusted like an old Coleman would be, because the font is made from stainless steel. So it's very robust. The feet, the whole nine yards are made from stainless steel. You've got a few brass pieces on here, but for the majority, everything on here is made of stainless steel. That makes it a far superior stove. So you ask yourself, you know, why wasn't this thing produced after 1945? It's hard to say. Um, one of the things that I read on the internet was that a lot of the patents for stoves like this that were developed during the war, during World War II, the patents were actually owned by the government 
and the government would not release those patents to let those stoves be manufactured by people like Coleman, Aladdin, places like that. But like patents today, most of those patents were design type patents, I think. And so when Coleman came out with the 530, which is that solid chrome stove that we talked about in an earlier video, they changed a couple key features on that stove to release it into the civilian market and called it the military pocket stove. And it was close to the military version, but it wasn't exact. There were some subtle changes that allowed them to obtain a new design patent and be able to release that stove. Aladdin just never kind of went that route that I know of. So this stove is kind of obscure. Now, with that said, the M1942 with the wheel on it that was only made for one year is very, very difficult to find. And if you can find one, you know, in really, really nice condition like this one is, you're talking two to $400, depending on who's got it. And if they know they have something or not, I mean, you can always find something dirt cheap if they don't know what they've got. But if somebody knows what they've got, you're talking two to 400 bucks. A stove like this one, the M1942 Mod, you can probably get for right around the $100 mark or maybe a little less. And again, if you found somebody that wasn't sure exactly what they had, you could probably get it for a lot less. I can't remember exactly what I paid for this one. I may have actually traded for this one, to tell you the truth. But this is, of all the stoves I have, and I have probably 25 or 30 single burner style stoves um, that were manufactured from, you know, the early 1900s um, for civilian type stoves all the way up through the 1980s and beyond. But I have probably 20 military style stoves that were made for military type use or copied after military stoves. And this one is absolutely my favorite of them all. This is the one that I would go to. And the thing with a stove like this versus your modern stoves like the MSR Pocket Rocket, which I'm very fond of, and some of those other stoves is the type of gas they will burn. This stove was made to burn white gas or unleaded gas. It will burn either one. So it's very easy in a scenario where you have an economic crisis and things may be more difficult to find or difficult to get a hold of, this thing will run on multiple types of fuel, which gives it an advantage. It's stainless steel, which gives it an advantage over corrosion of a steel font and things like that. So there are lots of good stoves on the market today, but as far as a heavy duty military style stove, this one would be my pick hands down, even though it's one of the older ones of the bunch that I have. All right, guys, well, I appreciate you joining me out here today for an another video in our gear, woodsman's gear of the 20th century. And this stove was used by lots and lots of woodsmen after the war. Make no mistake about it, there were lots and lots of these available. And so they went into the civilian market and they were purchased probably by the hundreds and hundreds, brand new in the box. Same thing with this cook set, which is still available today on some sites like Sportsman Guide, places like that. You can find this cook set brand new in the box for 25 or $30. But originally when this cook set was designed, it was made for this stove, but it was continued to be manufactured all the way into at least the late 70s that I know of. So there's lots and lots of surplus of this but this is much harder to find.